Hello and welcome back to the podcast. This is Victoria English, head coach at Alcohol Free Lifestyle. If you listen to my previous episode about high functioning problem drinking and it resonated with you and you came back, I want to thank you. And although you might be not be doing it, I am giving you a virtual pat on the back. This is brave showing up for this episode. Because the things that I described in that first part were not easy to hear. I understand that. I dealt with it and I've now coached hundreds and hundreds of people who were just like you. High performers who on the outside looked looked good. In fact, their lives might have even looked great. But internally, they were struggling. They knew that they had an issue and they couldn't figure out how to fix it. That's really tough when we're dealing with high achieving individuals who are accustomed to fixing. So thanks for coming back. And the great part about today's episode is I'm going to explain why Alcohol-Free Lifestyle Project 90 might be the answer for you. When you are a leader, a high achiever, a performer who gets things done, you recognize that part of the reason you've gotten to where you are today is that you were able to learn from others. During your advancement through your education, your career, whatever it is, you were able to receive feedback and use it constructively to improve. I'm sure that when you look back at your professional life, you had mentors. There were people that, whom you admired, who you'd look at and say, wow, I want what they've got. And perhaps you would emulate certain things, certain behaviors, habits, tactics, and eventually made them into your own, integrated them into your life in your career. That's the sign of a leader, right? Is being in a growth mindset and being willing to try new things, listen to others and grow. One of the things that I mentioned on that previous podcast was that a high achiever who is dealing with an alcohol issue is often very avoidant and reactive when faced with any kind of critical input or feedback about their drinking patterns. So when you think about it, that doesn't really align with who you really are. And it's natural. At Project 90, you are in with people who are just like you. Your experiences are different. Your careers, your families may may look different. But those feelings are the same because here you are a high achiever, a leader, and you're getting this feedback, maybe from friends or from loved ones. And instead of doing what you would normally do, which is receive it, consider it, find what's useful in order to empower you and move forward, you do the opposite. You push back. You may even become reactive and angry. You may point to all the reasons that you are fine. Might be followed up with something like, leave me alone, and possibly some drinks. We get it. Coming into, imagine coming into a community and having the same growth mindset that has served you so well in the past when it comes to quitting drinking. Imagine coming in open-minded, trusting that you are going to be surrounded by people who will inspire you, who have something that you want, who have been through the same struggles, the same thoughts, the same resistance. What would it be like to have those people as mentors? as your community, as your friends. You know, as a coach, 
As an alcohol coach, I'm, I'm good at some things in life. I consider myself to be a pretty intelligent woman. I'm a good mother, I'm athletic, decent cook. I'm lots of things. You know what I'm not? I'm not a real estate developer. I'm not in business. I don't know anything about merging companies. I'm not a physician. I'm not a surgeon. I'm not an artist. I'm not a musician. There are many, many things that I am not. And those are the types of members that we have. So I don't know how to do a lot of things that our members can do, but I do know one thing that they don't. I know how to help them achieve a life without alcohol. I do know how to do that. And so when a member comes in, if they're coachable, that's all I, that's all I need. If they're willing to come in and have that open mind, the same way they would if they were going into uh, a business mastermind or a real estate conference or a medical conference, open-minded, I get to do what I know how to do. And they find that often to be a relief. They find it comforting to know that, okay, I'm here. I'm here with James, Victoria, our other wonderful coaches, highly trained, alcohol-free, and they know things I don't know. And so I want to, I want to learn from them. And then because we have an evergreen enrollment, meaning that when you come in on day one, you'll be with people who are on day 10, day 20, day 60, day 90. You'll also meet people from beyond 90, our program that goes up to one year. And then you'll meet people from leadership. We have people in there who have been alcohol free with us for over three years. And you can look at those folks and say, wow, wait, you're trying to tell me that not long ago you were in the same boat? Really? And this is where you are now? Tell me again what's happened with your blood work. Tell me again about what the improvements in your, in your family. Tell me again about how your business has exploded. You were already a high achiever and now you're doing what in your career? Those are the people I want to be around. That's what it's like. And so, again, we are supportive of all paths to becoming alcohol-free. We have members who go to AA, who go to Smart Recovery, who do lots and lots of things. Everything here is welcome. But what's unique is that our community is a curated community. When you apply to join our program, you are vetted. This isn't because we're trying to be uber exclusive. This is not a country club. It's because we are creating a community of truly like-minded individuals, not just a community of people who struggle with their drinking. And that, in my opinion, and in the, the opinion of many, many of our members and graduates, is the magic. You are coming in to hang out with a group of people that you'd want to know anyway. We have in our community platform, we have a networking section. We have a business mastermind that happens every couple of weeks in our program where business owners and entrepreneurs come together and talk shop. Someone brings an issue that they're having with their business and they're all, you know, consulting one another, inspiring one another. These are people who are very, very successful and they're all clear-minded. Not a single one of them has alcohol in their system. How many of your conferences can you say that about? How many work events have you gone to? And maybe some of your mentors are there. Are they clear-headed like that? Are they staying up at the bar after, after the conference ends? Maybe a little fuzzy in the morning? Well, guess what? That doesn't happen here. Everyone's sharp and on their game. And these are high achievers who on the outside look like tens 
In the inside, they felt like a six, maybe less, maybe one more, seven. And now they're firing on all cylinders. So just imagine what might that be like for you? So you're finally able to stop being reactive and resisting the critical feedback. Instead, you're open-minded, curious, and ready to learn. Another reason that we might be a fit for you is because when you are a high achiever in this vicious cycle of alcohol, there's a lot of fear behind the mask that you're wearing. I know. There's tremendous fear that your facade will crumble. There's fear that, oh my gosh, if I, if I get behind the wheel and my community finds out, or the medical board, or the bar association, what will happen to me? There's fear that you'll be out and maybe your kids' parent, parents will see you, someone from the community, and it'll get out how you behave when you drink. There's another huge fear, and I think it's a special kind of misery for our high achievers. There's a fear that you're stuck, that you're stuck with this drinking thing because you can look back at your track record in life and you can number many, many, many achievements. You can think back to many hurdles that at the time seemed impossible. Maybe people even told you it was impossible. You're crazy. You're never going to be able to do that, man. And you did. So you've got a track record of success and you're saying to yourself, wow, I've tried everything and I'm still drinking. Is this how my story ends? And that is terrifying. We get it. I had those same thoughts. I thought I had tried so many things. And I started to worry, is this going to be it? Is this what I'm stuck with, this life? When you come in and meet your fellow members, they are going to understand that feeling. They may speak it, they may verbalize it and articulate it, or it's just a quiet knowing. No person likes to feel powerless. And when you have achieved things in life that have given you some, some measure of, I don't like to say power, but, uh, you know, mm, agency over your life, agency over the life, lives of others. Most of you have a lot of people who count on you. When you can come in and finally talk about those things, it is a huge relief. You know what happens in that environment when you can be in a place with people that you don't know yet, but they get you? There's peace. There's a relief. There's a big exhale. Finally, I can talk about this stuff. And they get it. That is so healing for our brain, for our body, for our nervous system to finally feel that sense of connection. To understand that you have coaches who are so passionate and educated around this stuff that you can trust them. You don't have to figure out the plan. We've got it for you. You don't have to create the solution or the methodology. We've got you. What would it feel like to say, all right, I'm here, coach me. Show me what to do. Because guess what? Everybody in, in, in our community is still doing their regular thing. 
They've got their jobs. They've got their community obligations. They have family obligations. They're often trying to repair family situations. They don't have the, they don't have the desire or the time or the energy to waste again trying to find this solution to their drinking thing. We've got it for you. We've got it for you. And if you've heard it on other episodes, it is proven. Our scientific study with the University of Washington observed 160 plus members go through this methodology. They followed our plan, coaching, coaching calls, showing up, community, allowing themselves to be seen and knowing others, learning to listen to others, have that compassion and empathy, and opening up and sharing their, their, their wins and challenges with others. You know, people aren't asking you, high achievers, how are you doing really? Are they? No, they're coming to you wanting to know how to solve a problem. <laughs> and so these are a bunch of high achievers asking each other, how are you really? And giving honest answers. And then finally, accountability. It's kind of wild, isn't it? When, when you are a high achiever and a leader and the one who is the organizer, the planner, the fixer, the resolver, the cleanup, all those things. It's not uncommon that we're not accountable to many people. And that can lead to behavior that, that we don't like, especially when it comes to drinking. Because our job is to keep an eye on everyone else. No one is really keeping an eye on us. And so, believe it or not, people who come into this program, they are craving accountability. They're tired of, of trying to run their whole life and fix this alcohol thing and getting away with it. They're tired of getting away with it because their life still looks good on the outside. They're like, man, I keep getting away with it and, I, and I'm gonna keep doing that, but I'm sick of it. I'm sick of being inauthentic. I'm sick of not living according to my values. I'm tired of it. And so what's great in, in Project 90 is we have a whole team looking out for you. When you join, you commit to being a part of Project 90. That is a big deal because again, this isn't a program where you just click a button and join. This is a process. When you are invited in, it's because we see those things in you. We see that you're struggling. We see that you are within the, 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 the realm of care that we can provide. And we see that you're willing. So it's a very serious decision when we invite you in. And that comes with a commitment from our side and from you, an expectation that we're working together. And so if you don't show up, which can happen because you guys love to be busy, or you might get really uncomfortable and you don't feel like showing up, we are there reaching out, supporting you. Hey, we haven't seen you in a few days. What's going on? How can we help support you? How can we help you ensure that you're on your calls, that you're meeting the other members? How can we support you? What a concept for all of those hard-headed, self-starting overachievers out there to allow someone else to support you. Feels a little awkward, I know. But man, does it feel good, especially when you're surrounded with the right people. That's the key. And so now what? Well, you have a choice. If you identified with the, the description I shared in the last podcast, Behaviors of 
high functioning problem drinkers, if you identified with some or all of those traits, you now have a choice. You can book that discovery call. It's 15 minutes, it's free, there's no obligation. We may not be a fit for each other, and that's all right. We have a lot of other resources. There's other programs out there, but making that call is a big deal. I know what it takes to, to make that call, to reach out. So that alone is a huge win. And we're happy to speak with you, whether you're a fit or not. So you can do that and see what happens. Because if you're looking at that list and saying, well, it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, I might be quacking. Maybe I'm a duck. Then do something about it. Or don't. You don't have to. I'm not going to tell you you have to. You get to. You get to do something about this issue. You have freedom. But the question is, as a person who is high achieving and has is accustomed to projecting, looking at trends, looking at trajectories, and assessing what you think might happen in the future, Look at this one. Is your, quote, high-functioning problem drinking sustainable? Only you can answer that question. Is it sustainable? Do you think this is, ha as much as you're drinking now, do you think that's as bad as it's going to get? Because as I've mentioned, alcohol use disorder is a spectrum. And the poor souls that we think of who are at the end of that spectrum didn't start out there. They started out closer to the beginning of the spectrum. And so did you. And so did I. I've said that when I was 40 and I hadn't yet stopped, I wished I drank like I did at 35. And at 43, when I still hadn't stopped for sustainable time, long, permanently, I wished I had drank like I did when I was 40. It is the nature of the beast. It's not you. It's not, it is the drug. You know, if you look at any other drug, of course people use more of it. And so chances are you will too. And so how's that, how's that trajectory looking for you? Will it be better? at Christmas. Will it be better next summer if you don't do anything? If you're being honest, I think you know the answer. So why not go for it now? There's always going to be something coming up. There's always going to be a reason to cut, kick it down the road, kick the can down the road. But what if you don't? What if you just do this for 90 days and see what happens? And as far as high functioning, again, mm, yeah, you're high functioning, but is that enough for you? If you know that, okay, I mean, I'm, I'm pulling it off. I'm getting away with it. My family kind of, my work sort of, my health is, you know, it's all right. Is that enough for you? We're not in our twenties anymore. Life is short. We all know that, but you know, I'm 53. Most of our members are from, you know, upper 30s to 60s. And they're old enough to ask that question. Is this enough? Am I satisfied with this? So if you are a high-functioning problem drinker, are you content with that? Or are you a little curious, maybe a lot curious, about what life could look like? That's a question only you can answer. But if you say to yourself, ah, what the heck, I'll give it 90 days. I can promise you life is going to change. 
It's a 90 days you'll never forget. And we'll see where it goes from there. But I would like you to give yourself a chance. Give it a try. We all know, especially as we are in middle age, how fast time goes. So why not? See what it feels like. What the heck? You've tried everything else. I know you're smart. I know you've given it your best. And I know you're capable of a lot of things. And it makes sense that trying to fix the alcohol thing on your own isn't working. You're going to get to use all those positive attributes now in our program. Remember who you really are, what you're capable of achieving, and let alcohol stop calling the shots. Stop telling you how you get to live. I hope to hear from you soon. Go ahead and book that discovery call. I'm wishing you all the best. It truly is energy well spent getting to the other side of alcohol. And I hope to see you here soon. Take good care.